Let's talk about the rappers for a minute. Can we talk about the rappers for a moment? Let's talk about Tupac Shakur for a moment. Tupac Shakur is a child of the 60s. Tupac Shakur, born out of the spirit of the revolution of the 60s. Tupac Shakur, fire in his bones. Huh? Boldness and rebellion in his blood. Born from his beautiful, bold Black Panther mama, Afeni. Sitting in the jail cell, a revolutionary woman carrying the fruit of life, mocking the child in her womb, mocking the child with rebellion, mocking the child with insurrection, mocking the child with a spirit to not go along with what's been going on. And if you didn't know who's rhyming, I guess I'm gonna say Craig Mack with perfect time. Fuck Biggie, fuck bad boy as a staff, record label, and as a motherfucking crew. Check it out. This one man called Troy is B.I.G. What's the deal? What's going on? My man Craig Mack. Ah. It's my foundation, you know what I'm saying? It's my life right here. And uh, this is uh, Craig on the album. Mack? Yeah. Nah, no, no. fuck that though. <laughs> You can't curse? Yeah, you can curse. I don't fuck, I don't fuck with that. You don't fuck with Craig. <laughs> All right. Um, but I noticed, like, on the remix, Flavor in Your Ear, y'all worked That together. was just something I had to do. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's politics. Puff asked me to do it. Yeah. I did it. I don't fuck with that. Dude. You were down with Death Row for a minute. False. False. Now, why does everybody think that's true? hurt. You know why that hurt? Because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm out here trying to get myself together business-wise and everything else. And everybody's running around gapping and right. everything else. So I'm speaking to other people. I'm trying to be a businessman about things. And people are like, oh, no, nah, we, you know, can't mess with you. You death row. Now listen, how did Big's death affect you? I mean, I know you guys kind of hooked up on the label around the same time, I think, so. Well, Big's death hurt me because, you know what I'm saying, I saw the brother come in the game, you know what I'm saying, and I saw... The, you know what I'm saying, the evolving and the evolution right. uh, of Big, you know what I'm saying? And it, it hurt me because here's a brother that got caught up in a lot of things that didn't need to be caught up in, you know what I'm saying? I love him so much, and I feel like I'm still going to see him. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. You know, and that hurt more than anything else. And it's like, you know, I want to say, um, you know what I'm saying, to everybody over there at the Bad Boy family, you know what I'm saying, God bless y'all, you know what I'm saying, and everything else, and, and my soul and my heart is with y'all. You know what okay. I'm saying? Now, did um, you foresee a lot of times? Yeah, you, you yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, did I want it to be my man Big? No. Did I want it to be Pop? No. But did I see it? Yeah, I saw it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I saw it because I saw the way it was headed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody with a little premonition saw what was about to happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just, it's just, it just hurts because, you know what I'm saying, I grew up and rap with him. You know what I'm saying? We be sitting there, laid in the same coat together in the mm -hmm. airports and everything else, waiting to get on a plane together. You know, we would get up six in the morning and do radio interviews together and yeah. everything else, riding around in a little van, just trying to make it happen. Me, Big, C's, and my DJ, you know what I'm saying, and the road manager for, for both of us. We would just do it. We got there doing it, making it, making it happen. Do you, you know think there could have been anything done to prevent all the stuff that has happened? I think a little bit of, of common sense, more or less, Instead of rolling with the punches, could have prevented a lot of this. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of going with your own heart instead of going with the heart of others. You know what I'm no saying? No question, no question. You know? True or false? You were down with death row for a minute. False. False. Now why does everybody think and it's that true? hurt? You know why that hurt? Cause I'm trying to, I'm, I'm out here trying to, to get myself together business-wise and everything else, and everybody's running around gapping and right. everything else. So I'm speaking to other people. I'm trying to be a businessman about things. And people are like, oh, no, nah, we, you know, can't mess with you. You death row. I'm like, no, nah, that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's not the case. Please don't get caught in rap propaganda. You know what I'm saying? But I met Shug. You know what I'm saying? Shug's a good brother. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people run around saying this and that about him, and he's getting into this and everything else. 
But I go on what I know from the people, how they treat me. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? And the brother showed me nothing but love and respect. How did you manage to hook up with Eric B, the infamous Eric B? All right. I was just told. All right. Me and Eric, me and Eric, I knew Eric from a while ago on a rough, like a rough scale. You know what I'm saying? He came and got Rakim out of my neighborhood. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's the... He a BLS, you know, DJ on the mobile van. No, we know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Is. He's rocking the cuts, coming, yes. coming to your park. <laughs> and Eric B in the back, you know what I'm saying? You go in the van, look and see Eric in the corner, just like a little elf in the back shop, the wood shop. You know what I'm saying? Cutting up the records. And so, you know, when I bump into him again at the Beacon Theater, it was him, Deion Sanders, and Louis Burrell. Was Hammer there? Hammer wasn't there, right? Hammer wasn't there. Hammer wasn't there. Eric's sitting over there, by right. the way. Right, Eric's so sitting know. over there. And um, we got cool with each other, you know what I'm saying? He was talking and everything else. And then he saw me performing at a show at some a, a small little warehouse in California. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, what you doing here, man? I'm like, yo, man, I got to make some money the best way I can, but I'm still doing my shows and everything else, trying to make it happen, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo, what's your situation? I said, shaky one. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to put it together, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's hard. I need some kind of, you know? Right, right. He was like, yo, here's a number. Hit me up. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? And we make sure it happens. So he was, he was on, he got on his mans. You know what I'm saying? First person he introduced me to was Shook. You know what I'm saying? And was like, yo, this is Craig, man. It's, you know, you ain't, I ain't got to say what it is. You know, boom. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, Craig is a little cool and everything else. Went to a couple other places. You know what I'm saying? Then. We gonna get Eric up life. in here. Yeah, we gonna get Eric up in here. We gonna get Eric up in here. So, you know what I'm saying? We turn around and Eric gives me the call back and it's like, yo, it's time to do it. You know what I'm saying? I got I got us a super crazy deal. I'm sitting in a good seat. We can go in here and bang this album mm -hmm. out and be ready for the people by the summer. I was like, word, you know? And we talk on the phone back and forth. And he, Eric saw me at, 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 at a real crucial time in my life, you know what I'm saying? So God bless the brother. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because he really, he really came through better than a lot of people would have, you know, came through. Right, You know what I'm right. saying? I appreciate that and love you for it. And well, I love you for it too, because I'm know? glad that both of y'all back. You know and, and we got together, you know what I'm saying? He sent the plane tickets over. I did some of the album in New York, you know what I'm saying? But then I flew back over to California. We got in the studio. Studio was right across the street from the hotel. It was hotel studio, hotel studio, See? hotel studio. You know what I'm saying? Back sometimes back in two, three joints a, a day up in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Put together the album and here we are. I got with somebody, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say their names, I'm just gonna say somebody that wanted to do another album with me. So I said, cool, I go, I gave him my price. And the price was to me it was low. You know, and it was supposed to give me the money. And I go in the studio and I start banging out. So he came to me and was like, yo, I can only cut you a third of the money I'm supposed to give you. I said, you know what, man, I want to do these songs. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to do this and that, a third, let's do it. You give me the money as we go. You know what I'm saying? I'll take a third again. I'll take a third again when we finish the actual recording of the album. Nothing happened. No money. So I stopped recording. So I'm not gonna be a, you know, an idiot and sit here and do all this stuff for everybody and I'm not gonna see anything from it. You know? Next thing I know, money come, you know, with this with this this bullish mafia mentality with him and his goons and all that stuff like that. You know, talking about, yo, you know, you owe us an album. And I'm like, excuse my friends, but I don't owe you shit. You owe me money. You know what I'm saying? So if you can come up with the rest of this dough, then we can come up with the rest of the album. No dough, no records. That's it. I don't think you know what you mean when you're saying that, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what type of dude I am. You know what kind of muscle I got. You know what I'm saying? Right now, you need to be in the studio. So I said, all right, meet me up there at 7 o'clock. And I went and got one of my gunmen. My man, um, I'm not going to mention his name either. He came with me up there. Okay? And they saw him, and they fell back. Because they was going to do something to me. But they didn't. So we talked about it, you know, came to definite look, no cash, no record. I'm not gonna be sitting here going in the studio all night, every night, busting my ass, and I ain't seeing nothing from it. And you're making me feel like even if you did have the rest of that cash, 
us taking it to the next level is gonna be a problem because it's gonna be money problems. I can see it already. So I caught a couple of threats, a couple of you know passes by in the street and everything else. I caught a couple of threats, and I was sitting there. I uh, was going to pick up my sister from work. And I'm in her car. I'm driving her car to go pick her up from work. And I just was sitting in the chair and I was like, God, I'm so tired of everything that's going on. I was in my sister. I called my sister because we've known each other for so long. You know what I'm saying? It's like brother and sister, you know. But I was in my sister's car and um, I had a gun in my lap. And I'm sitting there, I'm talking to God, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to do this. But if it comes to getting ugly where somebody's going to be trying to kill me, I'm going to have to do something first or do something to prevent that from happening. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I'm frustrated. I really need your advice and your love right now. And I started flipping around the radio station. 6.60 a.m. or FM, one of them stations where the Supreme team used to be on. Early in the morning, and the dudes from Upper Hempstead would have that joints blasting. You know, so I was looking for that. And when I turned the station, all this gospel music came on. And it was this song I've never heard before in my life ever, but I knew that it was God talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Because of the way it made me feel emotionally, I broke down, started crying all over the place in the car. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was thinking about trying to do this to somebody because it was really in my heart to kill him. You know what I'm saying? I was going to do it. But I knew in my conscience also that that's not the right thing you're supposed to be doing.